President of the Nigerian Badminton Federation of Nigeria, Francis Obi, is impressed with the performance of the Nigerian players at the just concluded third Lagos Badminton Classics, despite the athletes failing to clinch any title on home soil. Mr. Orbi says the Federation will continue to give local athletes the right exposure. Better than the last edition, even though we didn't win. Uh, we had two doubles uh, teams in the finals, and then we had a lady in the semi-finals. That's the first time we are getting to semi-finals in any singles event. So for me, it's a huge improvement, and uh, all we'll be looking forward to is to try and do what we did this time better, so that next time we'll perform better. Next year, we are going to attend more internationals. We are going to go to more countries, so that we'll prepare our team. That exposure is very important. League leaders Plata United this evening continue to strengthen their stronghold on the top of the Nigeria Professional League table following a 2-0 win against relegation strugglers 3SC on match day 32 in Jos. With the win, Plata United took their point tally to 58 points. In Shagamu, MFM FC defeated bottom team Remo Stars 1-0. Ayumba gave their chance to a fighting for the league title a big boost after defeating 10-man Kano by the same scoreline. In other league games decided this evening, Abia Warriors and FC Fayumba played out a goalless draw. Katsina United and ABS FC played a 2 all draw. El Kanemi Warriors defended another title contender, Aqua United, by a lone goal. Ferrari driver Sebastian Vettel has extended his world championship lead with victory in the Hungarian Grand Prix ahead of Remy Raikkonen and Valtteri Botha. Vettel, handicapped for most of the race by a steering issue, was indebted to teammates Raikkonen, not challenging him for the lead as his pace evaporated. There was Hamilton surrendered third place to Mercedes stablemate. The result means Vettel will take a 14-point lead over Hamilton into the summer break. Maybe it didn't look like, but uh, I had my hands full from, uh, yeah, three, four laps after the safety car. There was something wrong. I don't know why the steering started to go sideways. Um, and it seemed to get worse. Then I stayed off the curb, tried to save the car. It wasn't, uh, wasn't easy. I uh, didn't do a favor to Kimi. Obviously, it could go faster. I didn't have the pace. But then towards the end, it sort of did come back a bit. I had a couple of laps where I had a bit of a cushion, could breathe a bit. But uh, yeah, it was, uh, I really had to stay focused the whole race. Liverpool manager Jurgen Klopp is pleased with his side's 3-0 win against Germany's Bundesliga side Hertha Berling in a club friendly. The Liverpool manager, however, admits his squad currently has a few problems, but he is still pleased with his side's positive approach to pre-season. So we, we are not where we want to be, but we, we, but a pre-season, you have to work hard, So in, especially in England, we have only this one pre-season, so, and then a long, long season. So in this moment, it's good that everybody looks really um, yeah, positive, and that's how it should be. But there will come problems, of course, but yes, the, the new players are uh, maybe better than people thought they will be, and um, uh, that's how it is. We, we, we were being... I think we said it early that we want to build on the on the quality of the squad from last year. Russian President Vladimir Putin has given marching orders to 755 U.S. staffed diplomatic missions. Big upon to leave U.S. diplomatic missions in retaliation for new U.S. sanctions against Moscow. The president made the decision on Friday but confirmed the number today, which, must, which he says must go by September 1st. It brings staff level to 445, 
455, the same as Russia's complement in Washington. The number is set to include Russian employees of the U.S. diplomatic missions across Russia and includes consulates in three major cities, including St. Petersburg. President Putin did strike a conciliatory note saying he did not want to impose more measures, but also said he could not see ties changing anytime soon. Meanwhile, the U.S. says it has carried out a successful test of its controversial anti-missile system and has flown B-1 bombers over the Korean peninsula. The exercise is a direct response to recent North Korean missile tests. A projectile fired by the U.S. Air Force was intercepted over the Pacific by Terminal High Altitude Area Defense Unit in Alaska. The U.S. B-1 bombers also conducted exercises over the Korean peninsula with South Korean and Japanese planes. North Korea had on July 28th test-fired a second intercontinental ballistic missile, which it said proved that the entire U.S. was within striking range. The launch came three weeks after the state's first ICBM test. One of the leading candidates running in the Venezuela Assembly election and an opposition activist has been killed. According to senior Venezuelan minister Jose Felix Pineda, a 39-year-old lawyer was shot in his home on Saturday night. The killings took place before voting started to elect a new assembly with powers to rewrite the constitution. The opposition says it is a power grab by President Nicolas Maduro and is boycotting the vote. The head of the National Assembly also reveals that a youth secretary with the opposition party, Ricardo Campos, was shot dead during the protest. An Israeli military court has rejected the appeal of a soldier who was jailed for 18 months for killing a wounded Palestinian attacker. Elora Azaria was found guilty in January of manslaughter over the March 2016 shooting of a 21-year-old Abdul Fattah al-Sharif in Hebron in the occupied West Bank. Azaria, a surgeon and military medic, had appealed against the verdict while the prosecution was demanding an increased sentence. The court had rejected his appeal and decided Azaria's 18-month sentence should stand, insisting that his version of events had been unreliable. Azaria said he acted out of fear that Sharif might have been wearing an explosive vest. And the main news again. Acting President Yemi Oshibajo today ordered the Nigerian security operatives to step up the search and rescue efforts to free the remaining NMPC and Unimade workers kidnapped by Boko Haram in Borno State last week. Also today, APC members in Kaduna and River States disputed the conduct of the party's congresses as youths disrupted a press conference organized by the aggrieved members in Kaduna. The spat between Russia and U.S. deepened today as President Putin ordered 755 U.S. diplomatic staff to leave his country. That is the news at 10 tonight. Thank you for watching. I am Amarachi Ubani. Good night.